<laughs> Welcome to the Warren Finance Committee workshop, uh, May 13th, 2014. Uh, we're here to finish up discussion of the town warrant for the June town meeting. Um, last night we got over to um, Article 34, and we'll start tonight with Article 35. Um, it's worth mentioning before we move on that uh, as of today, the two warrant articles uh, or proposed warrant articles, um, and I don't even know which ones they are anymore. Which one? Oh, the okay. zoning. So 19 and 20. Um, are not going to actually be moving forward to town meeting for June. Apparently we're going to be seeing them uh, later on in the year. So that's going to move everything up um, by two articles. And based on the, uh, how the rest of our discussion tonight goes up, there may be another resequencing going on here, but we'll see that when it comes. Um, so that also means, if you haven't heard, that the um, the zoning public hearing that was scheduled for tomorrow uh, night. Thursday, Thursday. Night. No, Thursday night, yeah. Thursday, right, so two days from now um, has been canceled. So if you show up, you'll be the only one. Well, we do have a liquor license hearing before. At, uh, that's right, that's at that, six, so. right? Yeah, or, it's at six, yeah. Okay. <coughs> and all of that is up on the uh, actinmain.org website uh, scheduled for meetings. And it'll be on the TV, too. Okay, Article 35. Oh, before we even go on, I want to retract slightly. Uh, if we go back to Article 32, there's one thing that was written there that I just sort of remembered after the fact that we hadn't discussed. Um, it's a discrepancy in the dollar amount. Um, so this actually has 32,832. Um, the actual budget book says 32,852. So I believe there's a typo there, and that essentially drops, or actually increases, um, this article, this line item, and the article itself by $20. So you're saying 32,832 should be 32? Yeah, so if we go down, um, this is uh, Department 10526. So if we sort of bypass my spreadsheet and go back down to the official one. So was it 10526? 10526. So the special projects are in here somewhere. Um, yeah, so this is 32852 um, in the budget book. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's what it was at the uh, workshop on March 29th as well. So I believe, you know, obviously you'll want to look into that a little further, but I believe we have a typo here on the warrant. Okay. In fact, two of them. Did you um, send an email to Michelle about the other I have not. I, I haven't actually updated her with the like half a dozen points we came up with last night. Okay. I figured I'd hit her with all of it at, at once. But anyway, that's that one. So going on to Article 35, uh, appropriation for the rec department. Um, this one is it's been flat for a while. Let me see. They went down two they, years yeah, ago. Yeah, uh, last year they went down. Oh, was it last year? To ten. Well. The total appropriation has remained constant. What's been different is the amount raised because uh, the expected donation level has varied a little bit. If you go back to 2011, you can see it was 12960 appropriated, and it's been 12.4 for the three years since then. Um, but yes, the, the amount raised does vary. Yeah, we're down on the amount the town has given, though, right? So last year, last year was 11.4 to raise. Yep. Yep. No, and this year is 10.8. 10.8 two years ago, 10.8 this year. So we're basically back to where we were two years ago in in both the um, the taxation as the raise amount and the appropriation. And that was at the request of the um, recreation department to go down because they weren't using it as much uh, in certain areas they didn't have enough uh, kids to make up the team so 
they were paying fees to other towns so that our kids could still participate, uh, but the fees weren't as expensive as it was to run our own team. So that's why they uh, asked for that decrease. Is that why some of them are going to Shapley to participate? Okay. Yeah, well, the same thing you guys saw that's happening right. at the school. We're right. down to 190 students at the yeah. school, so we're just losing kids. Yeah. You know, we just don't have as many kids in town as we used to. Now, what uh, th does, does this amount include uh, maintenance of the of the ball field or? We just we just hold their money and um, they take care of all they that. They take care of all that. Yeah, they have a contractor that does that. Um, they also, everything that they don't spend goes into an account and this year they came and got enough money to buy that uh, shed that's a hot dog stand down there um, they're going to start selling hot dogs so they bought one from um, uh, that place on 111 over and um, trying to think of the name of okay. it yeah, I know where you mean <laughs> yeah you know all the oh, sheds that are on 111 yeah. um, Lyman yeah, yeah Lyman yeah. 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 yeah yeah they bought it they had them build a custom shed that's set up to yeah. sell hot dogs and yeah. have a refrigerator and all that and then they had electricity put in so um, they use that out of their reserve there it is it was around here somewhere okay um, so this is one of the articles that doesn't actually have a department in it so. I think it's because it's not a town department it's a nonprofit that that um, we maintain like the library where we maintain their bank account and uh, give them funding. Well, I mean, it, well, has, no, a, it has a budget book a charity, department. Doesn't it? it is a town department. Yeah. Okay. So, I'll find out numbers. I mean, it just helps to find it. Unfortunately, I wasn't. <laughs> I have um, the article numbers in my spreadsheet to kind of help figure out what's going on, and I couldn't find this department. And then I had to actually look it up in my right up here that it was 11301 and then I you know then it's this whole spreadsheet is in order by department so there's more than one reason to have it there it kind of helps to cement everything together okay so I'll review all of them before I send her the the list and any any that are on here that have a, an actual department that that is not on the warrant can I can I ask a question again sure. I'm going to the wording of this um, here we are raising ten thousand and appropriating twelve four, uh, but I see no mechanism there for uh, authorizing the town to receive incoming funds. In other words, as I understand this, what we're doing here is we're saying uh, we're going to raise by taxation ten thousand eight hundred we're going to spend twelve thousand four hundred the difference to come by money that the that a private body raises right uh but i think the town in fact i'm sure the town has to have authorization to accept that money from a private organization we are we already do uh, we have that other article that we were talking about last night where we can accept donations so we already okay so this is one of the this is yeah, one of the you do that accept, under we would accept it on behalf of the recreation department and we would put it into the recreation department's account i that's what i was assuming you were doing but yeah. you're going to incorporate that under that clear authorization then right okay all right i guess that probably works and as far as the um wording on this um, it's basically the same as it's been. I don't think this one's undergone any changes. The only variation is uh, the appropriation and the amount to be raised. So last year there was a little bit of a mix up or switch up. I won't say mix up, but originally it was requested to raise 11.4 and then in the process of discussion uh, during the workshop, it was determined that that was not necessarily needed so that's why we came in with the recommendation for the 10-8, which is the more traditional number. Um, and that's what actually went through town meeting. So even though the warrant was written a little differently last year, uh, for several years running, we've done the 10-8. Okay. Uh, appropriation for Conservation Committee. Uh, that's... Excuse me, it's not the number. There it is, um, Article 36. Um, this one has been 250 for, yeah, well, 100 back in 2011, but 250 since then. Price of flags gone up. Apparently 
Apparently so. Well, it's been bopped around. Actually, that's not the that's not the flag one. The flag one is I think the cemetery one. Okay, yeah. So Article 36, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $250 for the Conservation Committee. Now, is that for replacing gravest, uh, headstones or cleaning headstones? That's the replace, um, it's a lot of the same people that are on the two, that are the, the cemeteries and the Conservation Committee. Right. Um, I'm personally not um, really confident that I know what the con all the things that the Conservation Committee does for our $250. Well, I know Wesley now has been working to locate more veterans in the cemetery center in Acton. Um, they buy those, um, I think they're brass uh, holders for veterans to hold the flags that go into the cemeteries. Um, they have done some cemetery maintenance in the past where they'll uh, go in and repair broken stones and um, stand them up again. Um, and it's just pretty much like you guys have some money uh, for the cost that you might, you know, for printing or copying or whatever. You have, what, $200 in your account. It's the same idea for them to run that, that department. Um, usually it doesn't get spent. And they haven't been having a lot of meetings lately either. So, so it's really incidentals. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they can use it for whatever their needs are. I know one year they bought um, GPS, I believe, to help find the graveyards to, or to mark the graveyards because okay. we have a lot. Excellent of idea. Okay. Is that actually documented somewhere within public access? Used to be. Yeah. <laughs> um, if we don't have it here at Town Hall, I'm sure Wesley Ham has it, so <laughs> I'm sure yeah. we can get it. <laughs> Probably a good location for that would be. I have be a cemetery to, in my yard, but I don't think he's a veteran, so it doesn't get noticed. Uh, I've got a, a Civil War good, veteran in mine. A good, a good storage place for that sort of information would be the library. Yeah. Have access or copies of it available to the right. library, yeah. and it would always be available. I mean, it's, it's nice. I, I think I think I'd be very interested to, to know you know what I know. There's a lot of them little cemeteries around town uh, you know then there's the other end of the coin which is the security by obscurity which you know essentially if people know where these things are then they're more likely to get intrusions of an undesirable nature and vandalism and that kind of thing so if you, you know if you don't know it's there um, it's kind of hard to vandalize some of them are quite a hike in the woods mm, yeah actually we had a major disaster in one few years ago when we had cutting going up on remember when the the Forest Street crew was up on um, Huzzy Hill. No. Uh, well, this side of Huzzy Hill. What's the right. road that comes um, down? They went in there and logged it, logged right over a cemetery, and just made an absolute mess of it. And the conservation committee did quite a job. How could they that. not see it? <laughs> Maybe they didn't want to. I I don't know. Actually, it was it was a harvest for the town. It was a town. Oh, harvest. in the town forest. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, and they went into five acres of somebody else's land, and we just had to pay that off, what, last year or the year before? <laughs> right. Yeah. I remember We've been that. holding the money for all these years, and finally somebody from the family came up for it. It was $5,000 in timber that we took off of the lot next to the town for us. So. you got to be on top of these guys. <laughs> or some of them, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Peck yeah. Road. Article 37. <laughs> Um, this is the appropriation for county tax. Um, last year, as we're all painfully aware, um, last year the uh, county changed their fiscal year. So last year we actually ended up having to pay 18 months instead of 12. Um, and it's coming back down to 12 months. So I'd call that a good thing. This is just an estimate right now um, because they haven't finished their budget. They just um, appointed their budget committee recently. Um, but this is our best guess based on the uh, <coughs> finance manager for the county, given the number to uh, Michelle. So presumably it could sort of drift as high as it was two years ago in our last 12-month period, or, you know. Yeah, it could go I, up. I, I would it's find it unlikely that it would go down. Yeah, it's not going to go up to 460000 like it was last year, but, uh, or 450, 447. Um, but this is the, her best guess. and. Um, she used to be our town treasurer, so. Uh, so all you can do is your best guess at this point. Yep. 
So Article 37, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $300,000 for county tax, Department 108.51. And this does prove to what was discussed uh, March 29th. And 33% uh, decrease from the 18 month back to 12. And that is what, 108.51. Let's see if we can find that. Right there. Want some coffee? Oh, what was that? <laughs> it's not working. I'm sure these are very good microphones. Too good, right? Uh, possibly. <laughs> okay, Article 38, Planning and Development. Um, I'm pretty sure this is, yeah, been rock solid for four years, $538. Um, Article 38, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $538 for planning and development to be expended as Forrester Stipend. Department 107-05, and this proves to March 29th. And the detail is actually, um, the odd amount is really due to just FICA and yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. Is this still Steve Botkin? Mm -hmm. 107-05, right here. So the, the actual stipend is $500 and then, you know, Instead of we had FICA out, we and, and Medicare on top of that, or Medicaid. Yeah, instead um, of taking it out, we give him the $500, which is cheap money for what he does. And this is really kind of the reverse of any of the other stipends that we have. Typically, the, the, the number that's the stipend includes all of that stuff, so it's probably one of those grandfathered-in things. But that's the, way, the reason of the odd amount. Okay, Article 39, Cemetery Maintenance. Yeah, that's where the money comes um, from for the uh, flags and the markers. Yeah, so a couple years ago, that one jumped considerably, um, and that really had to do with flag and holders and that kind of thing for, the, for those years. But that, no, I, no, you're right, you're right, okay. That was probably a new set of holders. because Yeah, they had run out and they had to buy a whole bunch. Of, yeah. yeah, those are pretty expensive. Yeah, there was a, a deal with like they went from temporary to permanent or permanent to temporary or some such, and one of them was a little more attractive to the uh, thieves. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah. More attracted to the what? Bronze thieves. thieves. <laughs> so yeah. in article t in 2011, the extra funds are for upgrade from plastic to durable markers. And then that apparently turned out to be not so good a move because they were more attractive. Right. So. Can't win for losing sometimes. Um, okay, 10901. Here we go. Article 40. Appropriation for donations. Um, this one is a little tough to really accurately assess by looking at this. Um, the last year figure here, um, I've added in, I've taken the liberty of adding in um, an article that isn't actually here this year. It's the one that is, gonna, is reserved for, for new donations. So this 7262 uh, includes the donations article plus the Balch Lake donation, which was a separate article last year, but I, I've added it in just for a little bit more apples to apples comparison. Yeah, what we did this year is we kept everybody flat and we didn't take any new charities, um, even if they had asked for an increase. But actually, and oh, there's a couple I think asked for a decrease, which was kind of surprising. Yeah. Um, so there, were, there are at least one, maybe two, that asked for less than. They did before so so what we've got here the difference is um, that this year the Balch Lake donation is embedded in this article it's up right uh, these are alphabetical so it's up here uh, same amount that we gave last year in a separate article because it was a new donation there was some discussion on town floor about that um, this year the Sanford and Shapley Dam Coalition um, has been moved elsewhere um, 
essentially there's a separate article that's requesting permission to consider joining the the coalition and presumably then it would be Sanford Acton Shapley Dam Coalition but at the moment it's not well, for, yeah, for the last two years, we've considered it a charity because we didn't want to join. Um, because in initial discussions, um, when the previous town manager or city manager uh, was in Sanford, he wanted us to pay uh, a third, uh, Shapley to pay a third, and Sanford to pay a third. And at that time, Larissa, was, Larissa and Bill were doing the negotiations, and they said, no, uh, with the population in each of the towns, you should pay half, Shapley should pay a third, Acton should pay a third. The new town manager came in quarter. and has agreed. So quarter, that's quarter. Where, huh? quarter, quarter, quarter. I'm sorry, quarter, quarter and half. Yep. yep. So with the new town manager, he, they have agreed to that. So Sanford's going to pay half of the cost, Shapley's going to pay one quarter, and Acton's going to pay one quarter, which is what we've been giving them for the last two years, which will, what the town thought was fair. Um, so we are asking the question if the town wants us to sign the um, agreement and become part of that uh, organization. Is the agreement, will the agreement be in the warrant? The yes. Okay, good. There's another article coming up that discusses that, that uh, authorization. Um, and then there's the dams article that actually has it listed in there, so we'll be talking about that as well. But essentially the, the money, the proposed funds to go to uh, Sanford and uh, Shapley Dam Coalition is just not in this article, but it is elsewhere in the warrant. Yeah, it's taken out of a charity and gone into, the, um, into our budget. So what we have here, if we look at last year's um, donations article, we see 65.262 and 65.342 this year, and that's accomplished by uh, folding in the uh, Balch Lake improvement for 5,000, taking the Sanford and Shapley Dam Coalition for 4,700 and change and moving it elsewhere, and then uh, $100 less for Woodford's family service. They apparently only requested $100 this year. We gave them 200 last year. Yep. That was the one. So the sum total of those three changes reduces by this um, slightly yeah, odd amount nice. here. Yeah. Very unusual. <laughs> um, is there any discussion, and, and this does prove to the, to the uh, budget book, is there any discussion that you'd like to kind of prime the pump, so to speak, uh, before our meeting, which is probably going, this hasn't been scheduled yet, but for the for giving our our votes on the warrant, um, but I suspect it's going to be next Monday or Tuesday. Um, in the interest of uh, expediation for that meeting, is there any preliminary discussion you'd like to have about any of these um, organizations and and the amounts that they've requested and you know what we've given in the past versus what we're proposing giving this year? We didn't have them come in this year, um, but if there's any of them you'd like to have come before you guys, we can make that arrangement to have them come and um, plead their case to you guys. They, we've had them come in every year, so we just didn't feel the need, especially since we were just going to flatline it. Yeah, last year they, uh, nobody came in as well. Right. Um, but that was the first year in, in my experience that you know there wasn't a scheduled set of folks coming through. Yeah, we um, I have to believe that, that they like it better not having to do their own dog and pony show, you know, for the town of Acton. Um, and we did get materials. We have some in our in our budgetary materials here. Well, some of them I'd rather they didn't come because they're spending a lot more than we're giving them on the materials that they give us when they come in. Some of their brochures are pretty elaborate, so <laughs> we're giving them $100 and they're giving us back $200 in brochures. So this one here, the SASDC is, you know, zero for this article, but it's actually just been moved to the dams article. We're not giving money to the 4-H? To the what? Th there is no request. Oh, wow. Yeah, and in fact, um, that's worth... Currently disbanded, I believe. That's worth mentioning. So last year, if you look at the warrant uh, or town meeting, um, Hannah, who was the motivating force for the Busy Workers 4-H Club, for a number of years, um, came up before the, the meeting and made a motion to remove the proposed donation uh, from the warrant because they were not going to use it and didn't need it. Um, didn't get a second, and you know we ended up giving the money to the 4-H. Um, but 
the writing was pretty much on the wall as a result of that, that, you know, the 4-H was not really interested in, in having donations anymore, or at least for, for the time being. Um, so as far as I would think, you know, that's a pretty good reason for not having them on the warrant this year. There's an issue there with the activity of the group, isn't there? That isn't that the issue? Yeah, they're not, they're not running the program anymore. Yeah, that's why when they didn't put in for it, they're, they're just not, they're not active right now. I don't know whether they'll start up again. Do we right. have any kids in town that are, remain active at 4-H? Because there are a lot of active clubs around this. Moment. Well, I, I know there's some in other towns. I, I know Shapley's pretty active, um, so I'm sure if there's kids that want to be involved, they can be. But um, that, was, that was a pretty small group um, mm -hmm. down there anyway, so. Okay, moving on. Uh, next one is appropriation for dams, Department 10950. Um, that one is going up, and it's um, strictly because of the movement of the SASDC from donations to dams. Excuse me for just a minute, Ted. Did you did you hear from the state today? The dam inspector is going to be in town tomorrow, I believe. Did they get in touch with this office? No. No. Dam inspector for which state, dam? state of Maine? Yeah, for which dam? Well, <laughs> all of them, really. Yeah, all of them. Yeah, yeah. In any case, uh, Lorraine was Lorraine in today. Maybe check with Lorraine. Okay. Because I suggested that he get in touch with her. All right. So, oops. What is, what's that called again? SASDC. Dam yeah, Coalition. It started out. Sanford Acton Shapley Dam Coalition. But then when it didn't work out for Acton, they changed it to Sanford and Shapley Dam Coalition <laughs> with the thought that Acton, you know, the, the number one, why change your acronym and all your stationery? Um, and then with the thought that Acton may be persuaded at some point in the future, and it does appear that, you know, that's the case. Oh, well, it makes sense for us now. I mean, the dam yeah. control our lakes, and, um, you know, we're willing to pay, pay our share, but. You know, Sanford gets the most used out of those dams, so they should be paying at least half, and they have the, the tax base and the population, so. Okay. Any, anything else we have that we use with Sanford, like the, um, um, you know, the radios for the fire department and the police and everything else is paid on a per capita basis, so there's no reason why this shouldn't be either, so. So um, last year and in you know prior years for a while, um, we've had 5,500. So which the dams capital improvement fund for 5,000, Balls Lake for 500. Um, now there's a question that's come up on town floor in prior meetings, and I think it's perhaps a little more germane, or will be a little more germane, if and when we are part of the SASDC, and we are not at this moment. Um, and that is the fact that we're putting, um, well, I mean, this is it right here. Res uh, this is the comment from last year. Reserving $5,000 per year since 2011. Um, this should leave 15000 in the dam's capital improvement fund, so this year would be 20000 for the future maintenance of the Emory Mills and Square Pond dams. These are the same dams as covered in the Sanford and Shapley Dam Coalition, with 600, 60, uh, excuse me, 4,670 requested in donations Article 33 last year. The dam's capital improvement fund is described as Emory Mills slash Square Pond capital improvement in the accounting software. So. The point being that if in fact or when in fact we become part of the SASDC, we're probably going to want to reconsider this because we will then, they will not just be fly by night if we choose to donate to them capital improvement. Um, we will be part of that organization and we're sort of redundantly putting money away if in fact we belong to this organization that has funds to deal with these dams, contingency funds. And then we also put additional funds in. So it's not to say we would change it, but it's certainly worth re-asking the question. Yeah, if you look back, I made a motion after we right. approved the, 50, yes. uh, the 46 as a, as a charity. Yep. I made a motion to um, give zero for the dams right. for the $5,000. That was two years ago. Yeah, and, and um, the town, um, the, the amendment failed because the town still wanted to start a... Um, capital improvement fund for dams in case of emergencies. The difference being is that money stays in our account 
and we decide when it gets used. The money that we're giving to the coalition is to, is um, determined how it's used is determined by the group which comes up with I think there's two people from uh, Selectman's office in Acton, two people from the Selectman's office in Shapley, two people from the council in, in uh, Sanford. Then there's one or two from each, uh, one from each lake uh, for Acton and one from each lake for Shapley, you know, citizens. And then there's the town manager, of, you know, so there's this like 12 person team that's gonna decide how that money's spent. The money we're putting away, should there be a dam failure or uh, a major issue, should the inspectors come in as a major issue, and now that we're part of this association, they're looking for us to kick in, we'll have money in the bank to help kick in. So I, I, I would, you know, where I had asked that question before, um, I mean, we can ask it again, but right, I would. But isn't, isn't a large part of the funding for that organization and once we're a member and a voting member of that organization isn't a large part of that putting this money away for a rainy day for for the maintenance purpose no you have to read the um actual agreement it's all broken down on how it's going to be spent um certain part of it's for maintenance certain the part of it i mean they have an employee that we're now going to have to share the cost of the employee that runs the dams and all that okay so we're not being redundant it, in any no, real I sense mean, by by putting it in two different places no out of that forty six hundred dollars maybe a hundred i mean a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars is going towards uh, a capital improvement fund within the organization so um you'll have to look at the agreement it breaks down exactly how it's going to be spent Okay. But, but the you. other money, um, you know, people overwhelmingly voted to leave that in um, because of how much the dams keep control of our lakes. And, you know, one of the other things that made us not want to go in with Sanford was, uh, was it Green that was a man town mm -hmm. manager before? Oh, yeah. yeah. He just threatened. He said, well, we'll just shut the dams off and your lakes will go, you know, <laughs> if we didn't agree to it. So that's when they walked out and we stopped negotiating. So... Good but reason to walk out and yeah. not move it. I the mean, new guys, they, they obviously have a big interest in maintaining the dams. Otherwise, they lose their sewage system. <laughs> yep, exactly. That's what I'm saying. I know. They, yeah. they get a lot more use out of it than we do. Right. I mean, we've got our lakes in our, in our tax base, but, you know, they use it to run their sewer system. So. Well, they use... Uh, they uh, lose their tax base pretty quickly. Pretty much, What's too. It? What's yeah. that? They use that pond down oh, yeah, there yeah, for a lot yeah, of purposes. Yeah, yeah. Jet ski, uh, water ski competition yeah. and things in the winter and... Yeah. Pumpkin drop. Pumpkin drop from the airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's important. Yes. It's fun to watch. You gotta retain your sense of humor. You gotta retain your sense of humor. <laughs> what a cannonball. If I didn't, life would be a bit more interesting, I'm sure. Um, okay, so uh, in the uh, budget book right now, the, this 109.20 for the dams is actually the same number that. Um, was there for la last year. This actually is reflective of being in the donation section. So it was physically moved, but the number wasn't changed. There is a reserve number in the 507 series account number under this department to be moved up here officially uh, if and when the town opts to go in that direction uh, with this year's warrant. <coughs> Article 42, um, APAT. So APAT has been in town for a number of years. It's been operated separately from the town. Um, I think this is a reasonable description here. APAT is fully funded by cable fees and as such has previously been operated outside of the town's budget book. With the understanding that the new understanding that APAT funds are not necessarily earmarked to just APAT, this department is now included in town budgeting. Its presence increases the town's gross budget, but decreases the net budget. APAT's income exceeds its operating costs. And the article reads Article 42 to see if the town will appropriate from the APAT fund the sum of $39,868 for the operation of Acton Public Access TV, also known as APAT. And that's the budget that was put in um, by our APAT manager, uh, which includes all the people that come to film. They get $50 for each meeting that they come to film, whether it's five minutes or five days. Um, <laughs> Entirely fair system, I'm sure. I'm talking about our Saturday budget meeting. Um, and um, it also includes um, their phone, um, 
their uh, internet access. Um, we, we get this one kind of access that we get for free from APAP, but then there's another one that, they, that we need because we're storing all of our videos, which are, is required like any documentation that the town has. Now that we're videotaping everything, we have to document, we have to keep all that for so many years. Mm -hmm. So we're putting, putting that out on um, uh, YouTube. Sure, and we have sure a storage they're there, they're so we needed a higher quality line. They give us the basic cable. We needed a higher quality uh, line coming in, so we pay for that. Um, and then, of course, our manager's salary, which I believe is twenty thousand dollars a year. Is it on there? Twenty-one thousand. Yeah. Yeah. And the labor seventy-five hundred. That's just rough for the fifty dollars for all the things. Um, then FICA, Social Security, uh, office supplies. Equipment, telephone. Cable. One 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 ten. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm not even sure. Yeah, but is that his? If it's on the official budget for last year, if you want to compare and yeah, it is. So um, let's see. We got um, current budget, fiscal year request, and then the increase decrease. So if we look at one 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 five. if I could actually remember something for 12 seconds. 11110, one, 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 oh, there it is. So um, this is APAT, and so you can actually see uh, when, we, when it wasn't really officially on the warrant, um, this first column here is um, the current budget year and then the new budget year. So you can actually see that it's gone down a bit for the current budget year, or excuse me, for the proposed budget year, fiscal year 15. Right, and now when at the end of the year anything that's left goes into the uh, undesignated fund, whereas before we were just building it up into the cable fund um, because we didn't think we could use it for anything else, but now we know it's regular town money. Um, now presumably there's a, a fair amount of funds in this since they run at a at a surplus, um, there must be a fair amount of funds in there. What are the plans for that? We're going to leave some in there um, for uh, equipment changes. We've had to change equipment, so we, we got all the equipment for free when we started. But of course, with any technology, it's constantly changing. So we've had to upgrade over the years. He put in, I think, five thousand dollars for upgrades for this year, just in case. We've had things um, break or blow up or burn out, and we've had to go out and replace them. Um, we also, besides YouTube, um, have uh, purchased storage here um, that um, we can keep quite a bit of this stuff here, but if should that get ruined, then we still have the YouTube as a backup. Um, so what's there, um, I'm not sure how much it is. We'll have to look at that, and we're going to make a decision is how much to keep for an emergency, and then the rest will go back into the, uh, in with the regular tax money into the undesignated fund and into the town funds. You'll need it just if the bulb burns out on the projector. What's that? You'll need it just if the bulb burns out on the projector. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. Then you buy a big screen TV. <laughs> but this is an APAT. This is town, so the town would have to buy. We couldn't use, use, use APAT money for it. Uh, but now that we know we can, you know, we can do things like that now. Um, but in general, we want to keep a certainly a reasonable fund in that respect, just so we won't have to think about this department from a taxation perspective. Exactly. Yeah, we never we never want it to cost money to the taxpayer, so we always want. And you know, it's based on subscribers, um, and subscribers went down this year, mm -hmm. but we still got forty one thousand dollars. So, town municipal subscribers too. To cable, is that correct? Yeah, because what they do is um, because we opened up the uh, cable channel, mm -hmm. they put on an additional fee of three dollars and fifty cents to each household, and that comes out with the amount of households they have in Acton to forty-one thousand dollars now. I think we had like forty-six or forty-seven a couple of years ago, so it has yep. gone down. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so this is the. Um, last of the monetary articles, and this 9.9% uh, 9 .9 decrease is essentially a reflection of the 40, 44,000 and change that you just saw on the, um, 
from last year. Um, down to the 39868 and so that's kind of a vertical thing as opposed to a horizontal thing yeah. well the other thing is he was budgeting for the total amount that came in from APAT and we were still overseeing it so we weren't letting them spend that he, he would show a budget for whatever APAT sent us because they were sending to us to uh -huh. January they were sending uh, it and then we were you know so we were six months behind so his budget would start in June, like our or okay. Uh, July so 1st. does that mean that there was some there's some funds here that were going somewhere, where that they're not going to go any anymore, or no? That means he he would budget for the total amount, but we didn't necessarily let him spend that much. Hmm. Okay, we we made him do, give us a budget, but um, we would also all three selectmen had to sign for, before he go out and purchase anything. So he just because that budget was set at that. He didn't necessarily okay so that. does that mean that the extra funds from that are in an account for APAT so okay we'll so they asked Michelle how ah, much is there okay and, and we'll get to that article momentarily the one that where we hold funds over so that's why it didn't lapse into undesignated funds right all right so that would be um, article uh, 43 which is in fact the next one we're going to talk about <coughs> Article 43 to see if the town will vote to carry forward the following department fund balances and allow the balances uh, balance carried forward to, forward to be appropriated to the designated department. Um, and then another set to carry forward balances but not appropriate. All other unexpended fund balances and revenues to lapse into the undesignated fund, lapse school balances to be designated for school funding only. And there's really no school balances in here. That, that's handled elsewhere. Um, at this at the school town meeting so there's just a couple of differences between last year and this year um, so we have two changed items the road capital improvement um, added the phrase LRAP funds received and district one and district two road surfacing and reconstruction the, those two words were added uh, but the items themselves were present last year as well. Um, we have two, uh, excuse me, three new items. Uh, FEMA Emergency Disaster Reserve Fund, um, gym donations, and fire department grants, donations, scholarships. Um, interesting point here, the fire department donations are still present. So if we look at fire department donations here from last year, and now we also have fire department, oh, wherever that is, right here, fire department grants, donation scholarships. So I would presume that we want to tweak this to remove that because that's a subset of this. And we're basically changing fire department donations to fire department grants, donations, scholarships. Right. Would that be a reasonable statement? It would be. And to answer your earlier question about uh, paving and things, this is another way we've um, put money, or money that was voted in this year because they don't always get to spend it before right. June right. so that's why we've left it in there now before all that was just full if they didn't do that paving between uh, yeah, but June we, and June uh, then we, that money went back into the undesignated fund we put that back into there I was going to ask about that yeah that's that's, that's been that the case for the last couple of years yeah, but the only stuff. thing different here is that the phrase you know additional phraseology has been added that's all now Tom had asked about right. what we were doing so before. surfacing and reconstruction is I guess to be more specific in in the purpose of, of those funds yeah no Tom had asked earlier if we what we were doing about um, you know maintaining roads and everything that money was disappearing from them if they didn't spend it on yep. time and now it goes back to them so what they can do is if they've got a bigger project they can save money from this year add it to their 90,000 next year and do the project in, a, in August or September or October and use some of last year's money so and they they've been thinking that way along those lines where before that money was taken away so they were doing smaller projects all the time also allows them a little flexibility in how they schedule it and get it done yeah. and if they can do it properly as opposed to rushing to get it exactly done, so the books are clear by yeah <laughs> it really doesn't June 30. <laughs> it really doesn't encourage responsible use of the funds either you know 
So back in 2011, this, that was the change. So between 2010, 2011, we allowed these certain departments to now start keeping the funds that through just an accident of timing, they were losing before they were really readily able to use it to best effect. And we've been carrying that through. Phraseologies have been a little different here and there. Yeah, and every, one of this those, year, every one of but, those departments were losing their funds at the end of the year. And, and those are departments, especially like salt and sand, if we've got money left over, that should be carried till the next year because we know from three years' experience it's we're going to need it sometime. Um, so the LRAP thing, I presume, is just to be very clear that that some or all of those funds that we're rolling are are from the LRAP, correct? Some are, yeah. Uh, the hundred and eighty thousand dollars used to be, I think, sixty-seven. Oh. and this year it's forty something. And right, yeah, we do have a fair amount of coin and road capital improvement, so at least I hope we do. Um, the FEMA Emergency Disaster Reserve Fund, I believe we made reference to that charities. in an earlier article. List of charities. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and that was to, to help with the timing issue there where, you know, when we need to spend funds in an emergency, we need to spend them now and, and we, we're now going to be able to use funds from a prior emergency and not have to uh, pull from places that are better less left not pulled from. Um, gym donations. Uh, we, do we actually have a surplus on those? No. But just in case, yeah. it perhaps encourages folks to be aware of gyms, the gym, do the possibility of gym donation, and maybe <laughs> throw cash in our direction. Well, the only time I've seen them get donations um, it was for equipment that broke down. They got a donation from the Lions Club to fix a piece of equipment because they came to us and asked us to get it fixed, and we said we can't use town money. I said, we are, you know, when already using town money just to heat the building, yep. um, we can't be replacing your equipment. So the Lions Club gave them a donation specifically to, you know, it was written right in the donation to fix that machine. Um, and that's what they had to use it for. So, but um, if somebody gives a donation that's specific to a piece of equipment, then we would have to honor that. We couldn't use that to pay the, the heating bill or the oil bill. But if it was just so. a general donation sort of near the end of the fiscal year, we want to avoid losing that in the, in the translation. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, and that last item, you know, we've got this, and I guess the same question applies. Do we have, actually have grants and scholarships for the fire department that or, or is this more of a precursor to, you know, if in fact that happens to occur, we want to make sure that we accommodate it? No, it does happen. And we get um, scholarships for um, the firefighters to go to the different firefighter training, firefighter one, firefighter two, things like that. Um, grants they get right now, the grant is going through um, the Ambulance Association, but I think it's two years in a row they got a grant from Stephen King. Um, which bought us a defibrillator and that uh, six-wheel rig that they use to uh, haul, kid, haul people out of the woods. It's got a stretcher thing on it and everything. If you haven't seen it, it's a beautiful piece of equipment that was bought by Stephen King. Um, so it's been going through the ambulance, but should the fire department get the, you, you know, one of those grants rather than it go into the ambulance association, then we want to be able to carry that over. Thank you. Almost have to carry it over. In order to honor the grant, we have yeah. to be able to carry it over in order to honor the grant. Okay, so last year uh, and in prior years, we've been carrying a salt and sand fund, and obviously, we've had some issues with good old salt and sand fund. So, at this moment, um, will we effectively have zero in the salt and sand fund at the end of the fiscal year? Mm -hmm. Okay. But we have some salt and sand left. Not much, but we've got some down there. Okay. So the, the, the total appropriation of the special town meeting was spent on putting up? No. We didn't spend the total thing. But we the idea was it was going to go back into the into undesignated the fund. fund. Okay. We only asked for lapsed, permission right? up, we asked for permission up to that amount should we get you okay. know, four or five more blizzards. Okay. But I think we said last night, Paul, it was only 30000 that we spent on it. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So the rest just stays right in the undesignated fund. It doesn't come out. <clears throat> Any other Discussion on this guy before we move on. Okay, item uh, Article 44. <coughs> 
to see if the town will vote to transfer $40,000 from the undesignated fund to the capital improvement fund and to appropriate up to $35,000 from the capital improvement fund for the repair of the roof at town hall. Um, so this is the nearest equivalent to this is two articles from last year. And I guess my first question on this would be, um, are these substantially similar or would um, legal opinion argue that these should be separate articles? No. Um, As essentially they were last year. There were two articles. Yeah, but last year we were asking to go out to bid to, to build something. Well, actually we're asking that again this year. You're, I don't know. Let me look into that. That's a good point. Um, I know that in, 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 it's not for this article, but in prior opinions, I think this was from like 2010, you know, there were certain things stated about when you could put stuff in the same article and when you couldn't. Yeah. And, and at the very least, the question has been asked, and, and you might want to just look into whether it might be a better plan from a legal perspective to... No, to it does. It makes sense. We, yeah, we'll do that. And I understand that, you know, the, the idea really is to kind of, that it's going to kind of go from one to the other, but there really is a discrepancy here. So there's $5,000 that's going to go into undesignated funds, which really has nothing to do with the capital improvement uh, fund for, for the roof at the town hall. Which, ta which part of the town hall is that? Or is that the We've got <coughs> this side done, yeah. and the side that's over our office is done. We did that when we did the side, and the rest of it has to be done. Um, and we can't do any more siding until we do it because we don't want to drag roofing up over new siding. So we've got to do the roof first. So, and, we, and when we started the siding, we didn't have any intention of doing it because it didn't really need to be changed. But we found in, in the newer section of the town hall, um, whoever roofed it didn't know how to stagger shingles. So you had these straight lines with plywood showing all the way through. <laughs> didn't, and, I thought we got that fixed already. Or was we did on that part, but we haven't done this side of it yet. Um, and then we also found that um, whoever used the staple gun didn't know how to staple plywood down, so when we were stripping the shingles, the plywood was coming up too. So, um, so we've got to do some work up there. <laughs> we're lucky he hasn't leaked. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the state of the, the capital improvement fund? What's that? What's the state of the capital improvement fund? Does, uh, does capital, the second part need the first part in order to do the second part, or do we have a fair amount of funds in there that, regardless of what happens with, say, you know, that first part, we would still conceivably be able to execute on the second part? Well, all right. Right now, uh, fiscal year 14 beginning balance was $12,830, and the fiscal year expense for the ramp was 15000 and Fiscal year 14 revenue was 2,000. I don't know where that came from. Oh, this. Um, Why don't we simply change the word? We did. Oh, excuse me. Thank God. Okay. We're, balance if approved, we'll have $44,830 left in the capital improvement fund after taking $35,000 out for the roof. And once we pay the $15,000 for the uh, front entrance, that's going to be started hopefully this week. So the one does not necessarily preclude the other if it happens to be voted down. No, I mean, if, if it's voted down, we're going to be down to, I don't know, just under $10,000, 9000 Okay, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not arguing for that. I'm, yeah. just, I'm just sort of, my, I guess my point here is that if, in fact, denial of the first part would mean that we really can't consider the second part, then we would want on that second part to say, you know, the fund balance as of, you know, if, if article, whatever that's going to be, is approved or denied. But as long as there's sufficient balance and it's kind of a moot point, although it might be worthy to, to just state that anyway. You know, why, sh why should we put $40,000 in this fund? Do you have 200000 in there already? Do you have 10000 in there already? Yeah. Um, just to... Help to cement what the need might be. Yeah, what, what we do is we look at our projected um, excess at the end of the year is, is what Michelle comes up with, and she gives us that figure of what we should put in there. And this year she's projecting, um, and we'll know at that time, uh, $40,000. So that's what she's saying we should put into the, um, we're taking out of the undesignated fund, but it's actually money that's going to be going into the undesignated, it's 
we'll go into the undesignated fund when this fiscal year ends. So, so we're basically rolling, yeah, rolling that through the undesignated fund to a more appropriate right vehicle, right? Because that's where it'll be as soon as the fiscal year ends. So that's where that money would be. So by the time we go to the June town meeting, you know, we have to ask to take it from there. Well, we'll take it out of there July first. So you know, just you may or may not wish to provide just a little bit more background in either of these two things although i suppose it's pretty clear you know that the thirty-five thousand dollars would be needed okay and i think yeah we, we have needed. we have to fix the roof and then we're going to use um the $25,000 building maintenance to do one more wall of siding this year and then um, well we'll do more if we can I mean, we may be able to because it wasn't that expensive um, and then if not then we'll finish it the back wall next year so we're just thinking that with this nice new walkway and everything it would be nice if we got this front entrance <laughs> recited to go along with it you know? <laughs> up a little bit. <laughs> yeah <laughs> might look a little bit nice you get this big showpiece with gardens and everything out there with a with a uh, chair a wheelchair ramp and then you've got all this paint just dripping off the <laughs> so now are you replacing it with wooden clapboards or did you decide we did vinyl you did do vinyl. yeah this side's okay. done and the <coughs> side where our office is done we did vinyl and in the uh quality that and kenny actually did it because um um nobody wanted to bid on it doing it piecemeal Right. Um, so we pay Kenny by the hour um, as a town employee to do it when he's not working and it's worked out really well it saves us a lot of money mm -hmm. so and he hopefully he'll be willing to finish it and he did the windows too under that um, money that right. we I know nobody wanted to go there no he took them all home they want to replace them automatically he took them all home took them all apart recocked them painted them uh, he did an amazing so job. what what did that project ultimately cost to, to sort of fix the windows up so they weren't uh, uh it was twenty five thousand dollars is what we asked for and i think we're very close to spending the whole amount i know he the only thing he has left is the screens and so you know we gave them the money to do the screens so he can have those up for us now so um, we'll have a final figure, but it was very close to the 25000 But the amount of work he did, and he took everything apart, took it all home, and he's got videos of it. I don't know if you saw him. He showed him one night of all the things he had done. It was a lot of work. It was a yeah. lot of very, very time consuming, but worth it in the end, if you, as long as you take care of them from here on out. Yeah. Keep the storm sash on them. Yep. We're well, just being aware of moisture as well. You know, I think part of the problem was the weep holes were plugged up, and. We ended up with a lot of uh, built-up condensation that didn't do him any good. Yeah, he um, he used. Um, what you're saying? What's the other word? Oh, uh, you, you mean around where he installed them? Yeah, he, the he yeah, none of yeah, that was yeah, in there. He insulated yeah. all around them, and so we saved on heat and everything. So, it, it, well, he's a professional. He's very talented. So we were very lucky to have him do it. Article 45, acceptance of estimated main and federal funds. <laughs> if we get any. So this is a uh, housekeeping article. Uh, interestingly, we, we've seen, it seems the proportion, or definitely the proportion of housekeeping articles has gone down this year. We've just got more of the other kind. But uh, So this has essentially been going on for a number of years. The phraseology has been a little different. Um, so last year it changed slightly so it used to be see if the town will vote to accept all funds as provided by the main state legislator and uh, legislature and federal funds last year was changed to see if the town will vote to accept any and all funds received from the state of Maine and the federal government and that is remaining for this year um, so this brings up a point so if we look at article 16 back in the back in yesterday when we talked about it um, there's some new phraseology which talks about accepting grants or donations or any fees and appropriate such funds for the designated use so as long as they do not require matching funds and then we also talked about or encumber the town in any manner 
but that's grants. The money from the state and the federal government is is transfers. Okay, so the state gives us so much money. So this other one is never conditional. It's just here yeah. you go. Yeah, that's whatever they give us. We, it's okay for us to say yes. Okay, if, if they give us anything. Okay. <laughs> so that's smaller the only, and smaller over here. That's the only factor. <laughs> okay. So the so the matching funds concern does not apply here because they never require it. Right. So that'd be like the FEMA funds if we have a, an emergency, and it would be our um, road road. L yeah, Rap. the L wrap money, and um, I don't know if we get any more. I don't revenue know. sharing. <coughs> the revenue, revenue sharing. Yeah, if we do, it's not very much. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to share too much, huh? <laughs> well, it's to the point where we don't even include it in our budget estimates because we never know what we're going to get from them. So it's not very much. I mean, we guess what it's going to be, but you never know. And the same thing with the school. You saw what happened with the school. They had one figure when you guys started, and by the time they got done, oh, yeah, that was thousand dollars off. And that was pretty horrendous. That that was a draft version from December. Yeah. And then in March they chopped the heck out of it. Yeah. So you got to be careful about so what you predict for the it state. Caused a little scrambling. All right, so Article 46, authorization to enter an agreement with SASDC for dams. So this is the article that we alluded to back when we were talking about uh, donations and dams for the SASDC, the, the proposed change in status of Acton uh, for the SASDC. Article 46, to see if the town will give the Board of Selectmen authorization to enter into an interlocal agreement with the towns of Sanford and Shapley for the management and maintenance of the two dams, Emory Mills Dam and Square Pond Dam. Um, so my question for this one is, will the result of this article affect how Articles 40, which are donations, and 41, which is dams, are handled? Uh, and if so, uh, either we're going to want to take this out of order at town meeting or take this lovely opportunity now that we're mixing and matching article numbers to move it up before Article 40. So, in other words, is, is will the result of the vote for this article, you know, like for instance, might we take SASTC and stick them back in donations? Nothing in there. Might exactly. we, if, if the town is voting that they don't want to be part of this, then we shouldn't be funding it under a, under a charity. Under even, do, even donations, just yeah. nothing. No, we shouldn't be. And of course, we can't increase the wording of an article after the fact, you know, we can only decrease dollar amounts on town floor. Right. So I would say no. I mean, if the, from the, the way the vote went when I asked to take that 5000 out when they put the forty six or $4,700 into the charities, the way they voted, the people in the town that live on the lakes want this to go through because they want us to be part of those dams because they do control their property values. Um, so I don't think there's going to be any question that this will pass. Uh, Shapley just passed it at their town meeting in March. And uh, Sanford's already passed it too, so I, I don't think we have to worry about that. But if they do um, decline to do it, then I don't think that they're going to want us to be giving it to them as a charity because they're saying, you know, here's our, here's our money, but we don't want to be involved in the decisions. It's just right. Well, we wouldn't be able to do that anyway this year if it's not on the warrant because the dollar amount yeah. can, cannot be raised. But there, there's that next article, which is the uh, 41, which is dams. It's in there. Yeah. Um, so the question there would be, you know, might the town, and, and they would be entitled to do it because it would be a decrease of the article, so legally they could do it. I don't see necessarily that they would want to do it because last year we gave money in, as part of a donation. So Two years in a row we did it. Right, so coming back to this article, you know, this is going to be sitting there. Um, as of town meeting, Certainly, we would not be a part of SASDC, even if we were authorized five minutes earlier or ten minutes later to go into negotiation with SASDC to be to join them. We will not have, as as of that moment, joined them. Right. Um, okay. And and this this item is in Article 41. So presumably, regardless of how that turns out. Um, it would be reasonable to have this line item in Article 41. Is that a true statement? No, I, from what I'm seeing, from what it, what I think I'm hearing, we should be asking Article 45 first. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Article 46 first. And then that way, if they vote no, then we should take the $4,700 out of Article 41. So we would not be giving any money to SASDC if we voted not to pursue right. membership in SASDC. Right. So let's give them the option of joining it first and then funding it after. Sounds fair. So any anywhere prior to Article, and actually this is going to be what? Um, excuse me. I've jumped the gun here. Okay. So this is now Article 41. It's going to be what, probably 39 and maybe we'll make it 40 and stick the other one as 39, whatever. Um, we'll let but yeah, I, I think it makes sense from a logical perspective cons to consider that question before we come to this article. Yeah, because if um, they vote no, then the next thing they can do is take the $4,700 out of the budget. And, and But if they vote yes, then they can vote yes, we're going to fund it. So um, we would definitely have to ask the question first. But this article doesn't fund it. So no. I don't know if that law authorizes. Nope. So, so, and we have no more money articles here. Um. But this other article does fund it, wherever that is. Article 41. That, is, that the, is that the correct thing? That, that would be the funding. And in fact, it's slightly higher than. Raised appropriate. Yeah, slightly higher than the uh, 46, whatever it was. I th might have put it here. No, I didn't. Um, but it's here. Where's Dams? Uh, excuse me. 109.50. 109.50. So, oh, never mind. It was the one above it. SASTC. So 46.70 is what we donated last year as part of donations. And so this year it's moving and going to 4,700. And, and presumably that 4,700 is what SASDC would want for membership dues should we choose to join. Yeah. And the, the other number <coughs> was um, when the Shapley selectman, um, Mike? Yep. Mike uh, yeah, came up to the town, to the town and spoke and said that would be our share that year was a 4670. Now that the contract's written up, our share is 4700. So that's that's written right into the contract this year. How long is this proposed contract for? I, uh, oh. That's all right. We'll find I, it. I don't think it's I don't, I don't think it has a termination. It, it has terms for us to get out of it. Okay. But I think it's it doesn't have an end to it. Yeah, so I'll look at it. Is it in the uh, is it in the email that we received the other day, or, or no the contract is not no. But I assume a contract will be available. This is all really hypothetical okay. until the town says yes, I want to pursue this. Well, as it far as be, what I've it seen, it can't be hypothetical. We have to have a contract in front of us to vote on. Right. Well, this is to pursue. This is uh, this is not okay. Going back to this guy. Um, actually, that's an interesting question. So, to enter into an agreement, um, yeah, yes, there is no there is no agreement to consider on, on the town's behalf at this point. Correct? This is merely an authorization to move forward. No, no, no. We're asking to enter into an agreement. Okay. So the last time the last time we did it uh, three years ago, we asked no, we to pursue it. And we wouldn't have been able to go any further. We had to come to the town and ask them to approve the contract. This year, we're asking the town to approve the contract, so we will provide the contract on the town floor. Okay. So, as of town meeting, when before we vote on Article Forty Six, there will be a uh, contract that will be saying, "Yeah, this is a great, this is a good deal for the town of Acton," or "No, it isn't," and then be able to vote based on information as opposed to faith. Right. Um, is it possible to have that earlier so that we can maybe post it online so people can get a look at it before Absolutely. town meeting? Well, we have to have it here, too. We'll I mean, that'd be, well, I would certainly like to see it before we do our voting on, right. on uh, Monday or Tuesday or whenever that happens to be. Yeah, certainly if, if this is, in fact, saying, yeah, let's do it, let's jump, um, Probably ought to be worded. This article probably should be worded to see if the town will authorize the board of selectmen or authorize the board of selectmen enter into the following agreement. 
okay, with a specific reference to an agreement and, and include that as it should be right in the warrant. Or the, an attached or agreement, or, 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 or better right. yet, we've, we've done this before, like just have a tag statement that says copies of the agreement can be found in the, you know, the, Clerk the town clerk's office, and then you just attach it to the warrant as well. You, know, you wouldn't have to, sell, have to mention that, but just a you know, copy of the agreement can be, can be found in the town clerk's <laughs> office. Because we've done that for any number of things that, for instance, the, uh, the trash agreement last year, mm -hmm. that was actually the tagline. In fact, I may even have that here. Yes, I do. So, uh, yeah, a copy of the proposed new agreement is on file in the town clerk's office. So, makes good sense that, that we're talking about a real agreement that exists now that, yep. that is going to go or no go based on this vote. Yeah, well, I personally was not, you know, did not necessarily have that understanding reading that one article. Um, so a copy of the proposed new agreement, blah, blah, blah. And that's article, whatever it is. Yeah, the article should refer specifically to an agreement and copies. So the article 46 right now. As opposed to a broad authorization. And... Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, and the final one for this warrant, Article 47, to see if the town will vote to appropriate the following estimated revenues and fund balances to reduce the amount to be raised by taxation. Uh, fiscal year 2014-15 municipal revenues, 499,000, and municipal undesignated fund balance. 200,000 up to 200,000. Um, last year, as of the, the way the warrant was written, it was unknown at the time uh, that on town floor it was changed to something very substantially similar to what you see on this warrant, uh, 499,000 and then up to 200,000. And is it just um, random happenstance that those amounts are exactly the same or are we just sort of Settling on that as, as sort of go-to numbers from year to year, or well, the two hundred thousand the selectmen asked for. Uh, Michelle was saying um, a hundred thousand, but we want to have the opportunity to go up to two hundred thousand because if we put in what our projected overage is of sixty-seven thousand, and we put in a hundred thousand, that's going to leave us with um, What's the term? The extra money you add, so that just in case you don't get your tax money. overlay. Yeah. O overlay. Oh, slide. The overlay would only be sixteen thousand uh, dollars, and Ooh, that's, that's too low. <laughs> yeah. We w we want to go keeping like forty thousand plus. Um, so um, that's why we asked up to two hundred thousand. Now we'll know better what the municipal revenues are. Well, actually, we're getting pretty close to the year, but. I mean, the municipal revenues have been coming in like crazy. People are starting to register boats again. They're starting to uh, uh, register four-wheelers and all that kind of stuff. And people are buying new ones and paying excise tax. I mean, she's had several days in the last couple of weeks that were thirty-two thousand dollars plus in one day. So. Buying new cars too. That always, yeah, that yeah. Means, so, <laughs> so that's an estimate based on you know up until now and what we got last year. But you know that could be higher. But we definitely want to keep our overlay up over forty thousand um, dollars, and that's a recommendation of um, the O'Donnells and our um, assessor. So, but conceivably, either one of those could be less than what we're seeing in front of us. Uh, obviously, obviously the second one, but, well, yeah. but certainly the first one as well, as long as it's lower. Um, we just need permission so that in August, when we set the tax rate, we can go up to two hundred thousand dollars out of the undesignated fund to make sure that taxes don't go up. Now, um, let me see, she have the 200000 in there? Yeah, all right, so, um, undesignated fund, as of 6.30, we had 1,143,332. Uh, capital Improvement Fund approval, we took out $40,000 last year. Uh, tax commitment use, 51000 that must have been the overlay. Emergency fund not used yet. That's fifteen thousand. Fire truck repair special town meeting twenty three thousand nine hundred fifty four. Oh wait a minute. No, the overlay on the tax commit was thirty five thousand uh, last year. Uh, estimated balance before winter overdraft. 
one million forty nine thousand one hundred seventeen dollars if article two is ratified to fifteen percent is minus sixty four thousand uh, so after the ratifying nine hundred eighty five thousand in the undesignated fund article three uh, up to ninety seven thousand that was from that special time meeting um, and we only used thirty four thousand so the estimated balance on five nine was nine hundred and fifty thousand five hundred and fifty eight dollars in the undesignated fund uh, fiscal year 15 appropriations minus 55,000 fiscal year tax commitment used 200,000 that would leave um, a balance of six hundred and ninety five thousand five hundred and fifty eight dollars in the undesignated fund if we used up to the two hundred thousand but that does include what would go into the undesignated fund at the end of the year you know that we won't know that until um, we get the audit done and we feel comfortable with going up to that amount to keep the taxes from going up this year um, knowing that out of that 695,000 probably 500,000 of that is in back taxes but we feel comfortable and we won't go up to 200,000 unless we have to um, but we want to be able to have the tax rate not go up this year because we went up three three years in a row and we also want to have a very comfortable overlay so that we don't run into any problems and all of this is essentially to help offset taxation. Exactly. That's what it comes down to. Yep. Um, a point came up actually at um, at the school meeting. This is really more of a point of order question. And I, I think we have the right people in the room to hopefully answer this and maybe get one answer. Um, so most of these articles are expenditure articles. And it's, it's understood that you can't increase the amount that's on the article. You can only go down if you happen to want to do that. So if you have an article such as this, which is a revenue article, so it's in the opposite direction, do you still absolutely look at the number, regardless of whether it's an expenditure or a revenue, and say, OK, on town floor, you could reduce that number, but you couldn't raise it? Or would you have to say, oh, it's a revenue, so you could raise it, but you can't reduce it? You can't raise anything on top okay. of the floor. It so it's irrespective of whether it's a, 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 an expenditure or a revenue article, we just take an absolute rule that you can't increase that dollar amount that's on the article, regardless of what the net effect is to the town. Good to know. Yeah. Thank you. But that's why we're, we've raised it, uh, you know, to make sure that we have enough to um, accomplish what we want when we uh, set the tax rate in, in August. So, because, you know, once the town meeting's over and then the auditor gets done, then we really know where we are uh, financially. We won't know that until they finish that. So, I mean, we've got numbers, and Michelle's really good at keeping the books, but until they come in and find all the, you know, like we're doing here, finding things that need to be changed and everything else, we don't really know how much we have until that's done. So. The only thing I see here is that she has lowballed, I think, the excise tax, but not by too much. You know, our excise tax collection was 363000 last year, and she's budgeted at 350. I would imagine it'll be higher than 375, but time will tell. <laughs> so it wouldn't make that much difference. So the upshot for the warrant as a whole, and again, you, these are not numbers we're really going to see much of anywhere because it's essentially factoring in all the stuff that happened at special town meetings and, um, you know, it hasn't really been vetted, but from what I can tell, um, the, the gross amount that will be requested at regular town meeting is 2.5% less than what came through last town meeting plus the special town meetings. Work, Plus, we'll be able to get some road work done. So, right yeah, well, we had two special town meetings last year. If you remember, we had one for the fire department and one for the um, uh, road commissioners. So, yep. Thank you. And that's what these guys were about. Right. So we had um, ratifi uh, ratifying. Oh, excuse me. No, the ratification was at regular town meeting. It was these specials. Yeah, that was for last year's overage. Yeah. This year's overage was at the special town meeting, plus we asked for additional funds to get us through the winter. Yeah, that's what these two guys were all about. Okay, so 
Is there any follow-up or final commentary about the one in general? There will be some adjustments to this, because obviously we need to incorporate the things that came up during the workshop. I'm going to retool this, shuffle some things around for our meeting so that hopefully what is presented at the town meeting, and I do plan on doing this stuff again at the, excuse me, not the town meeting, the, the actual Warrant and Finance Committee meeting to, to present our, our votes. I do plan on having the visual aids that incorporates all the stuff that we talked about and, and whatever the selectmen have chosen to do with a warrant between now and then. Um, and hopefully it would be really great if I could see that paperwork a couple of days ahead of time so I don't have to beat myself up trying I'll, to yeah, I'll, let, computer. I'll call Jen in the morning and ask her to send that out to you guys because um, we do have it. It came to us from Chapley, so we do have it on a, on a um, Word document, I believe. This is the uh, this is the agreement. The, the agreement between, yeah. Um, and as far as the other changes, um, you're going to get in touch. Yeah, with I, Michelle I still, still have to get them out to her, so I'm going to try to do that tonight, just to get the ball rolling. Okay. Um, she's in tomorrow afternoon, I believe. Wednesday, I think she comes in in the afternoon on Wednesday. So she should be in sometime during the day tomorrow, either tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. And uh, we can get that finalized. And then if you could let us know, because all three of us would like to come to your vote meeting. And is there anybody else that you'd like to have us bring in? Any department? Do you have any questions? Or I think I'm good as far as the questions I have. Uh, I put that out to the group. I mean, there's five of us here uh, of, this, of the six that would be expected to be potentially at the meeting. Um, is there anything, is there anyone that we need to bring in of, that would speak to any of these, any articles that you need to have more information? Not at this point. I think, yeah. I think we await, I think we await the final draft of the, of the warrant. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's also housekeeping, right but yeah. I'm, I'm sure. And, and plus that contract, you know, you'll all have copies of the contract. When, when I get them, I'll, I'll distribute them out. And this, um, uh, and that would be the uh, SASDC um, contract for Article 46. We might be, it might be worth our while to poll the group and see if they have concerns or regards with respect to that contract Once prior, we see to, it. Prior, prior to setting a date. And if we, if, if we do have issues, we can resolve them before we're here and facing the last minute deal because it would work to everybody's benefit if there were that issues. would presumably either be a public hearing or a workshop and i don't see that we're planning on a public hearing um no uh, you're, so you're talking about potentially having another workshop before next monday or tuesday only if it's necessary i'm suggesting that maybe we have an opportunity to look at that agreement yep. pull the group and see if there's a need a, a question or a concern uh that would require addressing beyond Okay, how, how about a compromise, which would be um, if, in fact, any of us see something that we need to speak with someone who knows about this contract and can answer some questions, um, that we make sure that they are there at that meeting and we will allot, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that it wouldn't be uh, to overshadow the meeting itself, but if that's what we, you know, if we need answers before we can vote authoritatively, uh, that's what we're going to need to do. So, in other words, I don't think it's necessarily going to take a lot of time if, in fact, it does need to happen. So, so you'll know our town attorney wrote the contract. Okay, so Brad, that would Brad be the Warren person the that. Contract. Yep. Would it be possible to have the town attorney, if, in fact, we have questions, and I don't know that we will, once we see the contract, you know, on f sort of short or short notice? Because what we have here is a posting you, requirements have, for the for the meeting as itself. As, you, as soon as you get it. If you have questions, email them to Jennifer, and we can email them to Brad. Okay, okay that, and conceivably get them uh, answered offline before we actually go to the meeting. And that, I, actually, that would be the, the best plan if, yeah. if we could well, do that. That would be the cheapest way for the town, is for yep. us to just email them and have them email oh, yeah. the answers back. But um, Bill, and, Bill and Ed have been you know, meeting with them on uh, Friday mornings. I can't because I'm working, so they've been meeting with them for months. and. Um, Shapley had a lot of input into how this was written. Sanford didn't have a lot of it. Bill and Ed had a lot of input put into it, and you know they voted on it and everything else. So they're very happy with it. We're happy that Brad was the one that wrote it, since he's now our town attorney. Um, so we have no concerns with it. But of course, if you do, we'd be more than happy to ask okay. Brad. So it would be reasonable to to assume that we probably won't have any issues with it. 
but if we do, I'd, I'd like a recourse of some kind that isn't going to throw a, you know, a monkey wrench into the timing of, you know, we're already working on fairly delicate timing here. You know, we have a two workshops, you know, Monday, Tuesday, this week. This is our second one. We are looking at having a, a vote either Monday or Tuesday, and, and that's another thing I want to talk about before we leave here. Um, what's best for the group, um, timing-wise, and, and you're going to probably have a selectman at your selectman's meeting on the 22nd sign the warrant unless you choose not to do that and have a special signing on the 29th. Do you know if we are actually have our votes in hand for Monday or Tuesday, do you no, still want to wait, wait till the 29th? We're going to do a special uh, selectman's meeting on the 22nd and sign it that night is what our plan is. I thought the special was going to be on the 29th and your regular was on the 22nd. No, it's the other way around. I think. Okay. Yeah. Well, Let's say that it is. Uh, yes, but it's, I, the, it's, I the second, that. it's the second and last Thursday of the okay. month is when we All have right. our public meeting. So we were planning on having a special to sign it. I'm, I'll have to look at the calendar. I, maybe that is our regular meeting, but we were going to do a special to sign it early, I think, um, just to make sure that we're right with the dates. I don't know. You talk to Jen. Um, okay. Well, let's let's us. just. You know, that's kind of irrelevant. The 22nd, the 29th, so you're, you're, okay, so is your plan to sign it at a regular meeting if in fact, regardless of whether it's the 22nd or 29th, if in fact you're able to do that from a legal perspective? You're not going to schedule a, a separate special meeting just to sign it if in fact you can do it on the 22nd or 29th at the regular meeting, correct? We want to do it earlier rather than later. So whatever whatever the 22nd is, if it's our regular scheduled uh, televised meeting, we'll do it the 22nd. If it's not, we're going to make it a, a special meeting and okay. have it televised Fair and, enough. and just sign that. Okay, and that's the Thursday of next week. So for us, uh, here we are. We've had our second workshop. I think we've just, other than the one agreement that we haven't seen yet, um, I think we have hashed over this enough, or, or we will have by that time, um, to go into a meeting and, and not have a whole lot of extra discussion to, to get through the meeting, because we do have to do all of this in one meeting. We had two workshops to cover all the topics, but we're going to need to do it in one meeting, so hopefully we'll move along without a whole lot of delay. Um, that said, next Monday night or next Tuesday night, I believe, would be the optimal times for that meeting. Um, do you know what your schedules are going to be for Monday or Tuesday? I'd like to use whichever one will get us the most headcount for warrant and finance. It doesn't matter to uh, me either way. Okay. Is one of them preferred over the other for the rest of you? I, and and we're going to be able to make Tuesday, four people. But that's but I can do on Monday. Okay, so either both of you would be able to make either of those nights. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I would, and that's three. Same. Okay, so four, and conceivably we'll have five? Because I, I or, think, or, I'm, not, I'm not sure, I don't believe I have any obligations. That's okay, right. but the bottom line is neither one is going to be more preferable. Okay, so... Or Tuesday. <laughs> can I... Because, because it's later, or... It doesn't matter. Okay. <clears throat> Monday? No, Monday. it's not a matter of preference. I'm just thinking if we do run into... Um, a problem. Ah, so Monday. it might be better to have Tuesday, Tuesday to, to, to have a little more time to resolve it. Tuesday have Monday, what's that? Fall back. Well, either that or the other option is that we, we I'm, I'm thinking if we don't get it through all of it in one night, um, then perhaps it's time to, we, it might be a good plan to have a, another right. day before the selection. Well, it's always good to have a fallback position, right. especially when you're working with warrant and finance. Right. Um, no question about that. So, so Monday, I'm hearing Monday night and maybe have a drop dead date of Tuesday if right. we absolutely need it, but let's... Um, we are going to have the we don't. agreement well before the end of this week, right? Yeah, tomorrow. tomorrow. And, and the reason being here, you know, we have, you know, posting requirements. Right. Um, so I just as soon not announce, you know, two days of, of one finance meeting here. So I'm actually going to put on the schedule and have for Monday night, I would say that 6 p.m. is probably going to work best because we'll be um, a little less uh, fatigued by the end if we start early. Sounds good to me. Relatively speaking. So Monday, 6 p.m., um, I will have that Sorry, posted. <laughs> I'll starve. That's, that's all right. <laughs> 
We don't mind a little snack pack, but if you want to, <laughs> we'll, we'll have a five minute break for scarfing. Who eats this room? Bring, bring asparagus. Okay, so I think we've discussed all we need to here. Um, any further comments before we close out the workshop? No. Thank you all. Uh, that takes care of our uh, Tuesday workshop. Thank you.